In this video we're going to take a look at the very first generation of the Apple iPad. This model was released in 2010, it's a 16 gigabyte Wi-Fi model in this video and of course it comes with a case. But let's roll the intro and take a better look at this old beast. By the time Apple released the iPad 2, and then the iPad 3 and iOS 6 came along, the iPad 1 was completely discontinued. The iPad 1 is still stuck on iOS 5.1.1. It still features, of course, the classic interface that we all knew and loved back in the day. So let's get it out of the case so we can take a better look at the first generation iPad that I have here. I've had this thing for a while but never actually bothered to make a video about it. So here it is. This is the tablet itself. As you can see, it is fairly bulky. I actually like this shape. It's very sturdy. It's a bit thick, but honestly, I prefer thicker devices because these things are just... They're sturdy as all fuck, really. So here on the bottom, we have the classic 30-pin dock connector. One speaker here. So it's only mono, but uh, a lot of iPads were up until very recent. Here are the volume rockers and mute switch. On the top we have the lock button, microphone, although there is no camera, and the 3.5mm audio jack. And that is all there is to it. This is what the back looks like. As you can see, the shape of this thing is it's just very, very gradual. Or well, gradual. I kind of I really like this shape. It's not as rounded as the later iPads, maybe, but this thing definitely feels a lot more premium than the other iPads do. It's a bit weird to say when you own like a relatively new iPad. This thing absolutely feels a lot more premium because this thing, you know, it has lived five years in someone's house and it doesn't feel even slightly worn. Volume rockers are still very nice to push. The lock button is still very sturdy. It's definitely a very nice little device. Well, little is of course uh, has to be taken with a grain of salt because it's quite huge. Of course, it has this gorgeous, or well, back in the day, gorgeous uh, 1024 by 768 10 inch display, or 9.7 inches if you want to be very exact. Bezels are quite huge, as you would imagine, for a device of this vintage. It's still pretty zippy though, as you can see, the performance is pretty good. Um, let's just open Chrome here. Of course you have to be a little bit patient, because these things only come with an Apple A4 CPU. Hold on for a second. There we go. This should improve the lighting a little bit. Makes it a bit yellower, I know, but I was kind of fed up with the, the whole deal. Apparently, uh, it crashed at some point. Let's just open a website here, tweakers.net, which is a, a Dutch tech community. There we go. Came up pretty quickly. This is a pretty heavy site. Now it has loaded up properly. You can see that uh, scrolling is pretty good. It's not as Steve Jobs would put buttery smooth, but it's definitely acceptable. You have to uh, kind of take into consideration that this device is pretty old by now. It has only 256 megs of RAM. The internet has changed. Just a single core CPU. And of course, the storage isn't all the greatest either. I will make a video on this thing and whether it is still usable in 2015 later on. But for now, I'm just basically showing off what it can do. This is a Dutch news site. Or, well, app. Sometimes it just has to load for a little bit. Wi-Fi is a little bit sketchy at times, so... Not on this particular iPad, that's just the connection in general. Some devices like it, some devices don't. But it works fine. There is some lag here and there, especially when opening Spotlight, but this is even more prevalent on iOS 6 on the iPhone 3GS, for instance. I still own a 3GS, my mom has a 3GS, and they're both just complete nightmarish. 
The other apps work fine. For instance, Twitter. Just open that for a little second here. No, you cannot use my location. You cannot push me. There you go. This is the old Twitter, of course. It's just one big feed. So let's just scroll through here for a little bit. And as you can see, that works just fine. Let's open up YouTube here. It's definitely not as fast as my iPad Mini 2 Retina, but that thing has an A7, which is infinitely faster than the A4. But with all due respect, you know, if you have a little bit of patience, it will get there and it will uh, do an admirable job. For instance, let's load up my subscriptions. Let's just open this Fee West Live video here real quick. Of course, I should not forget to actually tap it. Let's give it some time. Here is Zorin OS. It's a new Linux distribution. There you go. Ideal for Windows users because it comes with a familiar start menu. As you can see, it runs full screen. And has a Windows Emily. It's almost virtually full screen. Maybe because the Westlife actually utilizes a 4x3 aspect ratio, who knows. But uh, yeah, that's just a really quick tour of this iPad. And as you can see, you know, while there is some lag here and there, it's definitely good that this device never got iOS 6 or even iOS 7. Because it's actually pretty zippy on iOS 5, it's absolutely just fine. Battery life is excellent. And iOS 5 still has all the modern stuff like iCloud and whatnot, so that, that all just works fine, really. It's not really all that obsolete just yet. I mean, if you're used to very, very fast and zippy devices like the more recent iPads, like the Airs, then yeah, this definitely is not a device for you. But if you're coming from like a really El Cheapo Android tablet that is just too slow beyond any usability, that this might be worth your consideration. This is a better deal, an, I an iPad 1 on iOS 5, than an iPad 2 on iOS 9. I can tell you that much. The iOS or the iPad 2 and the iPhone 4S, for that matter, are pretty much identical in terms of hardware. They're okay, but and they're up to date, that's for sure, but that does not exactly mean that they are great performers. They're both pretty slow on iOS 9, and they were on iOS 8 as well. iOS 7.1 was just fine on all A5 devices, but uh, iOS 8 and iOS 9 really ruined that experience quite a bit. I think you're happier with the performance of an iPad 1 and iOS 5, that's for sure. So that's pretty much my input on the iPad 1 that I got a while back. And uh, maybe this actually helps you decide on whether you should pick up one. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And... Uh, yeah, take care guys.